Are you gearing up for a tech interview? Then you know that NumPy is going to come up. And today, we're just going to cover that. We're diving into some must-know NumPy interview questions that are sure to impress your interviewer and help you land their dream job. NumPy has been a game changer in the Python world for almost two decades now. So if you want to boost your tech career, this is the skill to master. Want to know what other NumPy questions are likely to pop up? Stick around because I'm dropping a bonus at the end that could be the difference between you acing your interview or getting stumped. So let's begin with our interview question. But before we start with the video, make sure you subscribe to Upgrad's channel and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update coming from us. Let's begin with question number one. What is NumPy? NumPy is an open source, versatile, general purpose package used for array processing. It is short on numerical Python. It is known for its high-end performance with powerful n-dimensional array, objects and tools. It is loaded to work with arrays. The package is an extension of Python and is used to perform scientific computations and other broadcasting functions. NumPy is easy to use, well-optimized and highly flexible. It is compared with MATLAB on the basis of their functionalities as both of them facilitate writing fast programs as long as most of the functions work on the arrays. NumPy is closely integrated with Python and makes it much more sophisticated programming language. Question number two, what are the uses of NumPy? The open source numerical library on Python supports multi-dimensional arrays and contains matrix data structures. Different types of mathematical operations can be performed on arrays using NumPy. This includes trigonometric operations as well as statistical and algebraic computations. Numeric and NumArray are extensions of NumPy. Another answer for NumPy data science interview questions could be NumPy is used for scientific computing, deep learning and financial analysis. Various functions can be performed with the aid of NumPy such as arithmetic operations, stacking, matrix operations, broadcasting, linear algebra, etc. Question number three, why is NumPy preferred to other programming tools such as IDL, MATLAB, Octave, or Yorick? NumPy is a high performance library in the Python programming language that allows scientific calculations. It is preferred to IDL, MATLAB, Octave, or Yorick because it is open source and free. Also, since it uses Python, which is a general purpose programming language, it scores over a generic programming language when it comes to connecting Python's interpreter to C or C++ and Fortran code. NumPy supports multi-dimensional arrays and matrices and helps to perform complex mathematical operations on them. Question number four, what are the various features of NumPy? As a powerful open source package used for array processing, NumPy has various useful features. Number one, contains an n-dimensional array object. Number two, it is interoperable compatible with many hardware and computing platforms. Number three, works extremely well with array libraries, sparse, distributed or GPU. Number four, ability to perform complicated or broadcasting functions. Number five, tools that enable integration with C or C++ and Fortran code. Number six, ability to perform high-level mathematical functions like statistics, Fourier transform, sorting, searching, linear algebra, etc. Number seven, it can also behave as a multi-dimensional container for generic data. Number eight, supports scientific and financial calculations. Number nine, can work with various types of databases. And lastly, number 10, provides multi-dimensional arrays, indexing, slicing, or masking with other arrays facilitates SYN accessing the specific pixels of an image. Question number five, how can you install NumPy on Windows? To install NumPy on Windows, you must first download and install Python on your computer. Step one, visit the official page of Python and download Python and Python executable binaries on your Windows 10, 8 or 7. Step two, open Python executable installer and press run. Step three, install PIP on your Windows systems using PIP, you can install NumPy in Python. Below is the installation process of NumPy. Step 1. Start the terminal. Step 2. Type PIP. Step 3. Install NumPy. Question number 6. List the advantages NumPy arrays have over Python list. Python list 
even though highly efficient containers capable of a number of functions have several limitations when compared to NumPy arrays. It is not possible to perform vectorized operations which includes element-wise addition and multiplication. They also require that Python store that type of information of every element since they support objects of different types. This means a type dispatching code must be executed each time an operation on an element is done. Also, each iteration would have to undergo type checks and require Python API bookkeeping resulting in very few operations being carried by C loops. This makes for one of the commonly asked NumPy questions, where the advantages are required to enlist. Another advantage could be less memory space that is utilized to store the data, which helps in further optimization of the code. Scientific computing and array-oriented computing are more aligned advantages of NumPy. Question number seven. List the steps to create a 1D array and 2D array. To create a one-dimensional array in NumPy, you start with a regular Python list. Then you convert it into a NumPy array using np.array. Finally, you print it out. So this gives you a one-dimensional array, which is basically a list of numbers arranged in a single line or dimension. For a two-dimensional array, you start with a list of lists, where each inner list represents a row. Again, you use np.array to convert it into a NumPy array. When you print it, you get a two-dimensional array, which is structured in rows and columns. So the main difference is that 1D array is a single list of elements, while a 2D array has rows and columns like a matrix. Question number eight, how do you create a 3D array? To create a 3D array, you first define a list of lists in Python, where each sublist represents a 2D grid or matrix. In this case, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, 8, 9 represents one layer of a 3D array, where each sublist is like a row in that layer. Next, you use NumPy to convert this list into an actual 3D array by calling np.array or num3. This conversion is necessary because NumPy arrays allow more efficient manipulation and operations compared to regular Python list. Finally, you print the array to see its 3D structure with the data arranged in three dimensions. Question number nine. What are the steps to use for shape of a 1D array, 2D array, and 3D or ND array respectively? In 1D array, you create a one-dimensional array with the list one, two, three. This is just a single row of numbers. When you print num.shape, it will give you the shape of the array, which is three meaning the array has three elements in one dimension. As for 2D array, you define a two-dimensional array with num2, which is 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5, 6. This is a list of lists, where each inner list represents a row. So it has two rows and three columns. When you print num2.shape, it will return two and three, indicating the array has two rows and three columns. For a 3D array, you create a three-dimensional array with the num3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, 8, 9. This represents a single 2D matrix inside a 3D structure. When you print num3.shape, it will return 1, 3, 3, meaning one layer with three rows and three columns. To conclude, each array has its dimensions. Using the dot shape attribute in NumPy allows you to check how many dimensions and elements each array has. Question number 10. How can you identify the data type of a given NumPy array? In this sequence of code, the goal is to find out what kind of data or data type is stored in different arrays created using NumPy. For example, NumPy arrays can hold different types of data such as integers or whole numbers, floats, and so on. The dtype attribute is used to check this data type. For the 1D array, when you run the first line to print the data type of the num array or the one-dimensional array, you are asking Python to display the kind of data it holds. If this array only has integers like 1, 2, 3, it will return something like int64, which means the data type is 64-bit integers. For the 2D array, the second line of code checks the data type of the two-dimensional array or num2. In this case, the array may contain integers in the form of rows and columns, for example, 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5, 6. When you ask Python to display its data type, if it only contains integer, it will also return int64. If it had different data types like floats, it might return float64, depending on the data. For the 3D array, the last line checks the data type of the three-dimensional array or num3. 
this array might look like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7, 8, 9. Once again, if this array contains integers, the data type displayed will be in 64. If it had floats, it would show a different data type like float 64. Question number 11. What is the procedure to count the number of times a given value appears in the array of integers? You can count the number of times a given value appears using the bin count function. It should be noted that the bin count function accepts positive integers or Boolean expressions as its argument. Negative integers cannot be used. Use numpy.binCount. Question number 12. How do you check for an empty or zero element array? When you want to check whether a variable that is an array is empty or not, the best way is to use the size attribute in numpy. The size attribute tells you how many elements are in the array. If it returns zero, then the array is empty. For example, if you have numpy array A, which represents numpy.0s 1 and 0, this creates an array with 1 row and 0 columns. Even though it has 1 row, the array itself has no elements because there are 0 columns. When you check A.size, it will return 0, meaning there are no elements in the array, so it's effectively empty. However, if you use len A, it will return 1, because len is looking at the first dimension and sees that there is 1 row. It doesn't care that there are no columns, so it gives the misleading impression that the array contains something when it really doesn't. That's why it's preferable to use the size attribute to check for an empty array. It accurately tells you how many elements are in the entire array, not just the rows or outer dimensions, avoiding confusion when dealing with multidimensional arrays. Question number 13. What is the procedure to find the indices of an array in NumPy where some condition is true? You may use the function numpy.non0 to find the indices or an array. You can also use the non0 method to do so. In the following program, we will take an array A where the condition is A is greater than 3. It returns a Boolean array. We know false on Python and numpy is denoted as 0. Therefore, np.non0 where A is greater than 3 will return the indices of the array A where the condition is true. The condition np.non0 where a is greater than 3 or a is greater than 3.non0 will return the row and column indices where the elements in the array are greater than 3. It's a useful way to find the locations of elements that meet a specific condition within an array. Question number 14. Shown below is the input numpy array. Delete column 2 and replace it with the new column given below. First, we import the NumPy library, which allows us to work with arrays and perform operations on them. NumPy provides powerful functions for manipulating arrays. Step 1. Printing the original array, we define a 2D array called sample array using NumPy. This array consists of three rows and three columns. The numpy.array function creates a 2D array from the provided list of lists. The original array is 344373 and 822212 and 539466. We print the original array using the print function. Step 2. Deleting a column now, we delete the second column using the numpy.delete function. numpy.delete removes elements from the array. This parameter is the array sample array. The second parameter is 1, which is the index of the column we want to delete. Our columns are zero indexed, so 1 refers to the second column. X is 1, means we are operating along columns, as opposed to rows, which would be x is equal to 0. The array now looks like this, 3473, 8212, and 5366. We print the array after deleting the column. Step 3. Inserting a new column next. We define a new column using the numpy.array function. This creates a new column with the values 10, 10, and 10, which is a single column 2D array. We then insert the new column back into the array using the numpy.insert function. numpy.insert adds elements to the array. The first parameter is the array sample array. The second parameter is 1, which specifies where to insert the new column or index 1 means it will be inserted between the first and third columns. The third parameter is new column, which is the array that we are inserting, which is x is equal to 1, means we are working with columns. The array now looks like this, 34, 10, 73, 82, 10, 12, and 53, 10, 66. Finally, we print the array after inserting the new column. 
Question number 15. Create a 2D array. Plot it using matplotlib. So, first we create a 2D array with three rows and three columns using NumPy. We print this original array which contains numbers like 34, 43, 73 and so on. Next, we delete the second column, the middle one, using a function from NumPy. After the deletion, the array has two columns left and we print this updated version. Then, we create a new column filled with value 10. We insert this new column back into the array in the same position where the previous column was deleted as the second column. The array is now restored to the three columns but with new column of tens in place of the original one. Finally, we print this modified array. This shows how to modify arrays by deleting and inserting columns using NumPy functions. If you're ready to take the next big step into your data science career, check out Upgrad's Job Link Data Science Advanced Bootcamp. Designed for those looking to gain hands-on experience and secure job opportunities in data science. This program offers in-depth training, real-world projects and personalized mentorship to help you stand out in a competitive field. Plus, with job placement support, you're one step closer to landing your dream role. Don't miss this chance to elevate your skills and future-proof your career. We hope the above-mentioned NumPy interview questions will help you prepare for your upcoming interview sessions. We believe that every individual has a unique path to success and sometimes all it takes is a little guidance to unlock your full potential. Our expert career advisors are ready to help you discover the path that's perfect for you. Don't miss out on this chance to invest in your future. Click the link in the description below to book your free counseling session now and let's start building the career you've always dreamed of. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.